Hey guys, so it is award season in the entertainment industry and when the internet isn't talking about Trump or some cute dog or cat or baby video, it is talking about an award show! And the most recent being the big kahuna itself, the Oscars, and the death of all the Leo DiCaprio never getting an Oscar meme. I'm so proud of him, I feel like a proud mama. I mean, it's like, we didn't know, and then she said his name and the entire internet and the world just went, yay! Oh my god, Leo, I'm so proud of you. But seriously, after being almost mauled by a bear and having to eat a raw bison liver and sleep in a dead horse. Yeah, I think he earned that Oscar. And not to mention Mad Max freaking wiping the stage with six Oscars. Who would have thought a Mad Max movie would have gotten six Oscars, but it was such a good movie and they deserved all of it. Oh my god, I'm so good! Witness me! And a big congratulations to all the other movies that got nominated. Congratulations. I saw hardly any of you, but I'm gonna admit, uh, a lot of those, a lot of the movies that came out last year got snubbed and should have been nominated. Like Crimson Peak. That was a fan freaking tastic movie. And what about a couple years ago? Saving Mr. Banks? Yes, I'm still bitter about that. That was an amazing movie! Oh my god! And then there's freaking Fifty Shades of... I can't even finish the joke, I'm sorry. And following the thought of movies that never even got nominated, I started thinking about movies that don't even freaking exist. The movie ideas that you just kind of look at and you're just like, you need to be a movie. Why is this not a movie? This needs to be a movie. It doesn't need to be a great movie. It doesn't even need to be a good movie. It just needs to be a movie. Hollywood, get on it. So I came up with a couple of ideas that I would like to see and I share them with you now. Yay! Alright, we're gonna start off this list with something that everybody from the internet wants to see. Pirates versus ninjas. Like seriously, why is, why is this not a movie? Unless you've been living in a fallout vault since the beginning of the internet, chances are you know of this debate and you've already chosen a side. Team Pirates, Arr! But seriously though, we have Freddy versus Jason, Alien versus Predator, and Cowboys versus Aliens. Why do we not have pirates versus ninjas? The internet wants this. We need this. Hollywood, you have an audience for this. We want it. We're hungry for it. It doesn't need to be a blockbuster. It just needs to be good. Maybe it can be like a YouTube video, like Kung Fury or something. I don't know. It just needs to be made. Like a full-length feature film. Like, just do it. I just had this vision of Jack Sparrow fighting Sub-Zero, and it was awesome. Just think about that for a second. Now, let's look onto something that we'd all love to see. Some book adaptations! Yay! Books! Have you ever heard of the author Rick Yancey? If you don't know him, he's the author of The Fifth Wave, which did become a movie adaptation back in January. What you probably didn't know is that he also wrote a book with the legendary sword of Excalibur, and Ferraris, and motorcycles, and car chases, and the Knights of the Round Table, and treachery, and the fate of the world hating the balance, and death, and adventure, and you probably have no idea what I'm talking about and think that I'm making this up. Yes, it is a real book, and it is called The Extraordinary Adventures of Alfred Kropp by Rick Yancey. I'm not gonna lie, it's one of my favorite books from my childhood. Summary. Alfred Kropp is the last person you'd ever think could save the world, but when an over oversized underachiever gets roped into a suspicious get rich quick scheme, his life undertakes a turn for the extraordinary. Little does Alfred know that he's been tricked into stealing Excalibur, the legendary sword of King Arthur, and the most powerful weapon ever wielded by man. With an ancient order of knights in hot cars, thugs on motorcycles, and a mysterious international organization following his every move, Alfred undertakes modern day quest to unravel a thousand year old mystery and return the sword to its rightful place. Does this not sound like it would be an epic movie? Well, I think it does. It's my book. I think it does. Hmm. The next adaptations that I would love to see is very near and dear to my heart and I feel that every child should know about this series and fall in love with it and get to know this wonderful, wonderful little kindergartner. By the author, Barbara Parks, I nominate the Junie B. Jones series to become a film slash TV show adaptation. I mean, seriously, I love these books! Can we get a, a, a TV show adaptation about this strange, strange little kindergartner who gets into so many shenanigans at school? I mean, look at this picture. She's such a weird dresser, but just look at her. I'd buy that hat too. I mean, she's weird and headstrong, but do you know how many kids could relate to her? And how many parents could relate to having to take care of a child like her? Probably a lot. Okay, this just in, Judy B. Jones is actually a stage musical. And now my life is just a little bit more complete and happy. But seriously though, this needs to be a TV show. Make it! All right, backtracking a little bit, let's go back and talk about pirates, namely, Captain Jack Sparrow, savvy. We all know that Jack Sparrow is captain of the Black Pearl, and back in Pirates 2, he had a debt to pay to Davy Jones. But in the movie, they never really get into 
what the debt was or how he got into debt. There is a backstory. Turns out that Captain Jack actually used to work for the East India Trading Company under Cutler Beckett to transport slaves using his ship called the Wicked Wench. However, during Jack's only shipment, he freed all 100 slaves onto an island because, well, you know, People on cargo, mate. Furious, Culver Beckett branded Jack as a pirate and burned the Wicked Wench, sinking it to the bottom of the ocean. Jack then strikes a deal with Davy Jones, promising his soul in exchange for captaining his beloved ship for 13 more years. Jones raised the ship, which was now charred black and having the sails full of holes from Beckett's attack, and which prompted Jack to rename her the Black Pearl. And they've been sailing together ever since, until the mutiny, but, you know details. But no, we had to get Blackbeard and the Fountain of Youth. What? And finally we have reached my biggest why the hell is this not a movie? I want a biopic of Walt Disney. I want a backstory. I want an origin story of Walt Disney. I mean guys, there's already a fan-made poster out there with it being called Walt and that is such an amazing poster that I would just, if they could use, if they could make the movie and use that poster in real life, I would be more than freaking satisfied. I mean, we've gotten documentaries of him and stuff where he's like showing us around the park and stuff, but the closest we've ever gotten to like seeing an adaptation of his life is Saving Mr. Banks. And that is like my favorite movie ever. His childhood, his first company, Laughagram, which, which went bankrupt after two years, building, creating the Disneyland, Disney Studios, Mickey freaking Mouse. I mean, why is this not a movie? I just want a biopic of Walt Disney. I'm not crazy, right? I'm not, I'm not the only one that wants this. I'm not the only one that wants this, right? Right? So if somebody could just like get these movie ideas to Hollywood, that would be fan freaking tastic Especially the Jack Sparrow and Walt Disney one. Why are these not movies? Why? Why are these not movies? They need to be movies. What about you? What movie ideas do you have? Leave a comment down below and maybe we'll get these ideas to Hollywood and who knows, maybe one of them will win an Academy Award. All right, I got my own movie script that I should be memorizing right now, so I'm gonna go. So like, subscribe, and comment down below. No, seriously, please, lo please love me and I will see you all later. Bye-bye.